See how dark this is. <laughs> oh no. Yeah, it is what it is. I tried to mess with their timing, though. Oh, this is for the Fat Lovers Club. So when it's done, it's going to be uploaded there. Or on Patreon and Subscribestar, but I'm like, fuck it, I'm just going to work on it. While also putting up a stream. Slowly becoming a little bit more relaxed about that, because ultimately it doesn't matter. Because there will always be like variants and stuff like that that people will get on the subscription stuff. Plus this will be sold um, shortly after it's done in the uh, third wave pack. But mostly I just wanted to work on it but I'm like, eh, I can stream too. <laughs> too much for... <laughs> or fat ass is too much for your phone?
Yeah, I remember that episode. Even when I was younger, I was like, man, she would have been cool if she stayed that way. Little did I know. <laughs> Little did I know that was uh, that was furry me talking. <laughs> You're like, hey. They've done stuff like that, too, in um, Totally Spies. But Totally Spies has done everything, so I'm not surprised. I'm sure it'll be something I missed and I'll have to come back. this. Grab that in a moment. Hope everyone's doing all right. Thank you. 
What is a Batman villain that I like? I mean, a majority of the Batman cast I like. It's kind of hard to not like a Batman villain. Yeah, I think almost all of them I like. Now that I'm thinking about it. It's really hard to dislike them. Well, that's what happens when you get a fatty on your on your phone instead of a tablet. I mean, come on, the condiment king. <laughs> With well, peak characters like that, how can you not like Batman villains? Or Calendar Man. Or Calendar Woman, if you count her from the animated series. Yeah, Mr. Freeze is a really good character. His backstory is so fucked up, even when it continues on in uh, Batman Beyond. It's like, man, this character cannot get a break. And like for the most part, most, if not all, well, for, for the most part, of course I'm continuing with most. For the most part, nearly all of the um, Batman villains have like justified reasons for doing what they do. Like not a lot of them are villains for the sake of being villains. And again, most villains usually do have like a decent reason, but then you have characters who are just like, I'm gonna take over the world. And it's like, what? Or I'm just gonna blow up the planet. And it's like, what? Usually that's tied to like tyrant based characters. But, um. Uh, but yeah. Pretty much all of them have good reasons to. Do what they're do what they're doing. Uh, let me take a look at her hyenas for a moment. Uh. 
Yeah, her hyenas have spots, but it didn't really show her with them for this form. I guess technically she doesn't need it, plus she is the color of her hair, so that's probably why. Well, in um, Sub-Zero, it shows that she survived, like she was cured. And then in Batman Beyond, it states that she waited for Freeze to come to her, and he never did. And so she ended up remarrying. And the reason why he never did was because he was reduced to a head. Yes, I've eaten. I ate right before the stream.
Yeah, I kind of think um, the way he was in the movie was a good way to let him go for a while than to bring him back, bring him back with the uh, being a head in a jar with the spider legs thing. Like I, I just feel like it was just unnecessary. Well, it depends on the continuity of the comic, because I don't know if we're talking about like the animated series comic or something else. And plus, the uh, Batman Beyond is when Mister Freeze like dies, dies. So that's a whole different thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wish they had used the uh, Preacher Scarecrow a lot more, though, because I would have loved to learn more about that version of the character. There was, like, a short comic that showed that, um, that Scarecrow made that version of the costume because, I can't remember, was it Joker that said it? But one of the characters said that Scarecrow wasn't scary enough, and so he made that version of the costume to seem creepier, or to be creepier. But that's in like a short comic and we don't really know if it's like canon or not necessarily. Because there's some parts that don't line up very much or very well. But um... But I would have liked to have learned more about that version of Scarecrow because it seemed like he just had complete 180 of... of how he um, presented himself. Funny enough, one of my friends, uh, when I was visiting, I think it was on, yeah, it was on St. Patrick's Day. Um, she had made uh, Dino Nuggies for her, for her daughter and nephews, and she still had some left over, so she gave me some. I was like, "Fuck yeah, Dino Nuggies!" and she started laughing. Batman and oh, the crossovers are a whole different thing. That's it's hard to say if that's even part of the animated series at that point, because none of that stuff makes any sense after a certain point. Like you gotta remember, certain certain continuities just don't line up. And if and if people say that they're supposed to be part of that universe, there's you gotta really back it up than just saying it. Because by that logic, that's like saying, oh, okay, the Suicide Squad game takes place within the Arkham universe, despite nothing of that game lining up correctly with that game. So, take it with a grain of salt. And because that doesn't make sense based on the ending of, um, of um, what was it, Arkham City? Because that doesn't make sense after that. Arkham Knight? Okay, yeah, yeah. Because Knight had the um, Red Hood. But yeah, like... It's one thing for people to tell you that something's part of a certain continuity, and it's another thing if it actually acts like it is. Or has enough evidence to back that up. And then a lot of the time they're just bullshitting because they know they'll sell more copies if they say it one way. So yeah, yeah, this is in this universe, and everyone's like, oh shit, we gotta find out what happens, and then you find out that it's bullshit.
and then you know characters dying and coming back and whatever else happens Where the waffles at? It'd be waffle day. Dude, waffles sound so fucking good right now. Get me some waffles later. And that is for me. Hold on a moment. I'm back. She's gonna call me back in a moment. Her sister called her. But um, yeah, my ringtone is the standby theme for one of the Common Rider characters. Mainly Common Rider Bravo. I need to change up my, my ringtone. I've been using that ringtone for years. <laughs> oh, that'd be funny. Have Douglas make waffles.
Uh, Decade's theme song, or well, he has theme songs, but the standby song um, doesn't really have much of a ring to it. To it, it's just more of a uh, of a charge up sound. But I could get his theme song if I wanted. Same thing for um, Common Rider Legend. Legend has a pretty good um, theme song too. But yeah, like there are like playlists of just the standby so sounds for Common Rider drivers, and they all fucking are awesome. Like um, Common Rider Rider was has a really good one. Um, um what you call it? Common Rider. Ah, oh, fuck. Why am I blanking on his name now? Oh my god, I'm blanking. Ah, I hate that. I hate it when I'm when I'm when I'm thinking something on the spot and then all of a sudden it's gone. Oh my god, why am I blanking? I'm I know Commodore Waz is a good one. Um. Oh, Sabella has a good one. Gotchard is a really good one too. So yeah, like uh. A lot of the time, their standby themes are really good. And then you get the main theme, of course. And then sometimes their finisher sound effects are really, or standby is really good, too. And then the main themes are good. Um, like, um, Kamen Rider Caliber's um, um, Jao Dragon is really good. So yeah, like, like after this song's over or this playlist is over, um, I'll play some of the standby sounds. Like they're technically really short, for the most part. But like some of them are are shorter than others, even though they're all short in general. But um, they just sound good after like a few minutes of listening. But yeah, Bravo, Bravo to me is probably like one of the best ones because it just has like a whole rock theme to it. And then when common writers get like their own theme songs with lyrics and all that those are really good like um punk jack is um pumpkin king or pumpkin um theme song it's really good because it reflects the character where he wants to be a, a famous um rock musician and so he just has a, a whole theme song that's dedicated to that called pumpkin or pumpkin king or something like that i think this was the name of it it's been a while And then his writer name is Punk Jack. I hope Punk, get, Punk Jack gets a final form. That'd be sick. But so far, only three of the main writers have gotten final forms. Not too many female writers have had final forms. And that is my friend again. Hold on a moment.
I'm back. I think her phone died. <laughs> she might call me back, but um, if not, then I'll just keep talking. Alright, let me play some Kamen Rider standbys. I was just playing that while she was talking. Uh, Kamen Rider Waz standby. So here's Waz's theme song, or standby loop. So this is like r before he transforms and he's getting ready. So yeah, it's really short, but I like it. I'll let it play a little bit longer. And then this is the one I use for my ringtone. So yeah, that one's really short. Uh, what's another good one? Uh, let's try Sabella. She has a pretty good one. Yeah, Marvel's Capcom had really good ones. Good songs. Speaking of which, let's play Roll's theme from Marvel vs. Capcom. Uh, MVC Roll. I think Roll's was the first one with um, lyrics. Later.
I'm back. Sorry about that. <laughs> yeah, this is um, Shuma Garas theme. <laughs> nice, nice one. <laughs> Ooh, I should do Dr. Doom's next. He has a really good one. Chihuahua says hi. Yay! Puppy time. <laughs> Magneto has a good one too, man. Marvel's Gakko music just fucking slaps. Yeah. Like, I could just literally sit there and just listen to freaking Marvel's Gakko music all night while I draw. Shoot, I, the other day I was listening to freaking Tony Hawk Pro Skater 2 um, tracks the entire time. <laughs> but then again, most of those are like actual, well, I mean, everything's an actual song technically, but those are like already like serialized songs and stuff like that. Uh, three, let's do Magneto real quick. Yeah. Hopefully, with how popular X-Men 97 is, maybe Capcom will be able to work with Marvel again to get another game going. Since Infinite didn't do so well.
Sega versus Capcom. Yeah, that'd be fun. The closest we have to that is, um, uh, uh, what was it called? Fuck. I need to look it up now. Because it was the crossover game with um, Namco. What was it called? Really? Was it just Nap? No, it was Na it, it was Namco Cross Capcom, but uh, Project Cross Zone Two. There we go. That's what it was. Yeah, because Project Cross Zone had. Um, Namco, Capcom, and um, Sega characters. Yeah, that was the closest. But an actual fighting game would be sick. Almost done with this pick. I have no idea what I'm gonna work on next because I can't work on I hat on stream. Not on Twitch at least. Probably work on another card. That would probably be the way to go. I need to make a template for card sizes so that way for cards that I can speed up on I can just stick to their actual size. <laughs> I 
I'll have to look at that later. But love me some gators. I mean, it's a croc, but still, I like reptile characters to begin with. Uh, maybe. Still got other stuff I need to work on. So I'd rather do something that's a little bit more on the productive side. No. <laughs> if I can make those, that'd be a whole other thing. Uh, listen to some Nike. Oh wait, I was supposed to play Captain America. We'll do that first. Almost forgot. I was like, wait a minute. Uh, Captain America. There we go. But yeah, trying to work on the last cards that I need to work on for the next for the set that's coming out. Which means I also need to finish up King's card. That won't take me long, I just gotta make sure his effect makes sense. That'd be funny. It's like, I review the fat furry so that you don't have to. <laughs> Just have Douglas go through all the fat furry comics and just rate them. Angry video game nerd? That's fucking Kiwi. It's either Kiwi or, or Stacy. I just realized all three of them wear glasses. Douglas, Kiwi, and Stacy. As well as Angry Video Game Nerd and, uh, and Nostalgic Critic. Yeah, I can see Stacy getting severely pissed over bullshit gaming mechanics. But then again, so with Kiwi. Kiwi would get equally as pissed. She's like, the fuck is this shit? Like fucking Silver Surfer, good lord, I remember playing that game back in the day. Man, old school video games were evil. Those games would kick the shit out of you. That's why fucking Contra gave you a code for extra lives. It's like, alright, bitch, here's some extra lives. Good luck. <laughs> That's like half the time fucking the Konami code for Contra was freaking mandatory. It wasn't even like, oh, this is a cheat code. I like, know, man, that's just mandatory. <laughs> It's not even a code, it just fucked up on the game and gave you extra lives. <laughs> or the game is so hard that they just gave you extra lives for free. I miss cheat codes. 
Not too many games use them anymore. All right, now Nikkei. Man bet. <laughs> Cheat codes are now microtransactions. <laughs> I mean, they're not even cheat codes. They don't. All they do is just give you a little extra resource. They don't actually help you. It's just like, oh, you, you, you need to keep going? Okay, here you go. Try again, bitch. Doesn't guarantee anything. <laughs> but, but yeah, like, honestly, if it's just skins, I don't really care too much about microtransactions. But anything after that is more of a. It better be good if you're spending money on it. Like, the closest of uh, microtransactions being counted as a cheat code would be the pay-to-win shit, where it's like, oh, you spent 10 bucks, now you're in god mode or some shit for, like, five minutes. That's when, that's the closest thing to a cheat code, or air quotes cheat code. back up a bit. There we go. That's cool. Yeah, I like when games do give you like hints to a to a cheat code as well. Sometimes you have to beat a game for a game to tell you a cheat code. should probably save. That would be smart.
this and this a bit. Thinking of doing another auction soon. If I do, I'm thinking of doing all the fruit cast characters as auctions. Yeah. There are games like that. Alright, I think Tekken did something like that, I don't know. I know one game did something like that where you play as an object that just can't fight at all. And it's just in there as a joke. Most of the time, game developers throw stuff like that into the game. So that way producer, or um, the, the, the higher ups or whoever's in charge or whatever can tell them to take it out so that way they don't have to take out something else they like because um every once in a while they'll be put in situations where a higher up wants to feel all important and shit and so they'll remove something that was a good idea just so they can have input and so a lot of the times developers make like obvious jokes so that way um higher ups will take those out same thing goes for animation stuff. Like, they do that all the time, too. At least they did back in the day. I don't know how things are nowadays. It's really dumb how much developers have to go through. Sometimes it's their fault, other times it's not. Uh, oh, I know which good slot. Actually, no, because that one might get scouted. Do some of these. Ha, ah, that's funny. Easter eggs are fun. Especially, like, when they're put into a game that you have no realistic way of finding it, and you have to, like, hack the game or use whatever cheat code that lets you walk through walls in order to find it. And it's in some, like, bizarre location.
Kind of like in um, the original Halo. Was it the original Halo? It might have been Halo 2. Um, where you have to like glitch one of the enemies um, to follow you up to a certain point. And you have to like blow off its wings in order to get it to, to fit into the tunnels. And then when you get to the area with the bridge, you have to like get onto the vehicle like as the as the level is loading in order to keep it in the the area and then you use it to fly to the top of the bridge and you find the scarab gun and it's like a ridiculously powerful weapon yeah pc is like pretty much the only thing that uses cheats still whether it be actual cheats or hacking If I ever make a game, I'll make some weird ass cheat. And I don't know what it'd do. Depends on the game. If it's like a dating sim game, it's like, oh, put in this cheat to make characters fat. There you go. <laughs> the fat cheat. There you go. And you have to like use the code when Skylar is present or something. <laughs> so like whoever Skylar's talking to, you put in the code and they get fat. <laughs> 10 out of 10 game <laughs> yeah if I ever if I ever make a visual novel or some shit that's what I'm gonna do that'd be a good one change um Skyler's skin to to the double chef. That'd be a good one. Yeah. One of these days, I, I don't know when. Maybe when I'm done with the current comics, I'll like take a break from comics and actually work on something, something else like a game or a or um videos or a card or something or cards or something. Just so I have some, it's like technically a break, but it's like I'm still doing something. I don't know. I have to see how everybody feels about that. Like I'll still do like, you know, the monthly stuff like Fat, Fat Lover Cl Lovers Club and the polls stuff. Like I'll still do that, but the comic stuff might take a break if I do something like that. We'll see. That's, that's way in the future. If I decide to do something like that. But yeah, that would be fun. Put in some kind of cheat combination and all of a sudden characters are fat. Or a game similar to um, to Smash and the Will of the Wisps, or Smasher and the Will of the Wisps. Just have more of my own characters. But yeah, just depends on the type of game I try to make. Fat Lovers Club, Amy Rose. Didn't I do Amy already? Thought I did. Um, probably not. Let me see. Uh, Fat Lovers Club. I probably didn't. I don't recall drawing Amy as of late. Shoot, not not near one. 
Uh, doesn't look like she was in year two either. Well, there's vanilla. Year three. Uh, no, just Tangle Whisper. I thought I did Rouge. Unless she was in another set. Maybe I missed her. Oh yeah, there's... Oh wait, no, that's not Rouge. Uh... Oh, that's Honey. I was like, who the hell is this? Honey, Vanilla. Yeah, I do need to do more Sonic characters. Oh yeah, I did do Rouge. I did Rouge and Blaze. Yeah, Rouge and Blaze was in year one. But yeah, I, have, I guess I haven't done Amy. <laughs> then again, there's so many fucking Sonic characters, the, the well is near infinite. Because <laughs> I can do Bunny. I can do Julie Sue. Conductor's Wife, aka... Hey, I know, I'm, I'm, I'm sticking to Cinnamon. I don't care what anybody else calls her. I'm calling her Cinnamon until she gets a canonical name. Sally, yeah. Breezy, both the Archie version and the Adventures of version. There's like so many options. Like the Sonic series is the gift that keeps on giving. Like, the bright side with Sonic games is even if a Sonic game is bad, if there's, like, a new character in that game, then at least we'll get some artwork of that character, whether it be Rule 34 or not. So there's always at least one bright side to that. It's like, man, the game sucked, but this character is awesome, and plus the music was, was, was slapping, so at least we got that. <laughs> That's why Sonic games range from just, like, bad to good to awesome. Not necessarily in that order all the time. And usually the bad games are like far in between. Despite what people want to make you think. It's like, oh, Sonic has nothing but bad games. Like, no, that's not true. <laughs> Only like a handful of them are bad. The rest have either been okay to great. <laughs> so... Top 10 so so um, Sonic Girl, Hot Sonic Girls? Well, yeah, Sally's definitely in the top 10. Like, hands down. I could not for the life of me tell you what order, though. Because some I might like more than others, and sometimes it my, my ranking system changes depending on <laughs> the situation. Go away, phone. <laughs> but yeah, like, Sally... Sally and Bunny are definitely in top 10. Rouge is up there. After those four... Blaze, obviously. I would like to see Sarah come back. She was actually a good um, character. She was better than Elise. Elise is not even near the top 10. She's not even in top 20. Elise is so freaking boring of a character. Oddly enough, though, there's artwork of Elise and of Elise in like a Sonic Adventure style, and she looks so much better in that style so if they ever brought elise back in like the current sonic style like the way the games are right now she would probably be better off because she looks amazing in those artwork so if you ever like uh let me see if i can find it 
Uh, at least I think if this was it. Oh yeah, there it is. Let me just grab the link to this. Copy. Yeah, that link is to the uh, Elise artwork I was talking about. If it was actually Final Fantasy, I expect it to be better. Plus, Sonic 06 had its own problems. But I'm mostly just talking about Elise as a character. She doesn't, like, do anything. Like, nothing noteworthy. Like, Sarah freaking squares up with against um, Metal Sonic and tries to beat the crap out of him to, to let go of Sonic, so she's already higher <laughs> higher ranked than, than Elise. Plus, Sarah's a cat girl. We need more cat girls. But yeah, like if they brought back Elise and tweaked her character to fit the the style of the current Sonic series and just, you know, made her look um, that way and just, you know, made it uh, like whatever dialogue between uh, different different regions and stuff like that. Like if they just brought her back in that way, she'd probably be better now than she was back then. But yeah, OSEX had its own problems. It had bad production, or bad um, development and stuff like that. The only good thing that came out of OSEX was um, Omega's infinite flight and the meter not working so you could just do whatever. That was like the only good thing out of that game. <laughs> and Blaze the Cat being like the most broken character in the game to play as. And she was awesome, but she only got like, what, two or three levels? 
compared to everyone else. Yeah, the fan remake, um, from what I saw, was, was was really good. They did a lot of fixing for the game. That's why Sega is pretty much hands-off to a lot of it. It's like, at this point, they've, they've just been letting their community just do whatever. Very rarely do they step in for anything. For At least when it comes to Sonic games. If it comes to, like, Persona and other stuff, then you're going to have a, a bit of a problem there. But when it comes to Sonic, they're just like, you know what? We're just going to be hands-free for a lot of it. I know they want to bring back Virtual Fighter, but uh, can we get a, a new Sonic Champions? Question mark. They got more than enough characters to use now. It would be awesome, especially since they can do more than they could back then. Wasn't Champions like a, a really quick development game? Because I think it was, I don't know. I know Honey the Cat finally got added back in at one point, which was a bonus when they re-released it. I think it was like the Xbox version or something. One of the games. But yeah, like, did you just make another Sonic Champions? It would be awesome. Just make it Virtual Fighter with supers <laughs> and just go crazy with it since all the characters are cartoony. I mean, come on, Fang the Sniper's pop gun? Come on. <laughs> And then we can get newer characters so we can get Rouge the Bat in there. Shadow, of course. And then who knows who they would put in for DLC. If they're if they're smart, they'll they'll bring the Freedom Fighters um, into the game. Whether it be D, uh, DLC or or I just, you know, part of the normal roster. That would be the smart idea. There's, uh, there's so many options they could do with the Freedom Fighters in terms of how to bring them back into the series. They can either do it via comics, they can do it in like an RPG style, they can do it via fighting game. They can even do it in an adventure. Like they, they, uh, all there's all they have so many op options. Rouge the bat bombs. Yeah, they could. Depends on how iffy they are with Rouge, because it always seems like anytime it comes to Rouge nowadays, they're trying to like tone her down, and I'm like, why? Why are you toning down this character? This is literally what the people want. That's why they toned down her jiggle physics in the in the GameCube port. Because if you played the Dreamcast version and shit, those things were bouncing around. And she had a fat ass in, in the original Sonic Adventure 2. And they like changed one of her costumes because I think she had like a cat uh, woman costume or something like that. It was either that one or a different one. Or a Joel thief costume, whichever. But yeah, I know they swapped out her costume before. I still have my Dreamcast copy. It always freezes up now when it gets to um, Tails versus Dr. Robotnik. But uh, 
after that scene, but after that point in the game, the game works fine. But for some reason, it just freezes up on that specific spot. So I bought. That's why I bought the uh, GameCube version, so I could still just play the game normally. <laughs> like, they could do so much with the character. Like, I know they tried make. They tried doing the whole Shadow being edgy game thing, which it can still work. Like. It, it's just the gameplay needed to be better. That's honestly the only problem with Shadow the Hedgehog. It's just the gameplay was just whatever. But um, they could totally just make side games of all the other characters. Like, give Knuckles his own game again. Uh, well, yeah, again, because he's only had like one or two. Um, give Tails his own games again. Like, there are characters people want to play as not just Sonic all the time. Like, and, and again, there's nothing wrong with Sonic, but people like the other characters. Just give them their own games and just, you know, make it, make them unique. They don't have to play like a regular Sonic game. They can play like their own styles. Like, for example, Tails can, you know, either use um, Max the entire time or you can make it so that he plays like a normal Sonic character, but then he builds his own, like, you know, vehicles and stuff during the game. And there you go, he uses those to solve puzzles or get to different locations that he couldn't normally fly to or swim to. Knuckles, you can do the whole treasure hunting thing, like in Sonic um, Adventure, if you want. Um, Amy could be a little bit more action-based since she has her hammer. Same thing for Knuckles, since he, since he physically fights all the time. Or you can go like the Persona route, make make a RPG Sonic game, um, make it better than the uh, Chronicle games. There you go. All they got to do is secure or make sure they have the rights for Shade, and there you go. Because I know fucking Ken was trying to take the take away Shade, and everyone's like, "Uh, you do not know the the rights to her." Just like when he tried to take um, Scourge, and it's like, no, 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 you get Evil Sonic because that's what you bitched for. We get Scourge. <laughs> and he tried to take him away. Hello. Thank you. Just trying to not suck at art. Do -do. Almost done with this. He's still got a few more steps, though. But yeah, like... Sega, Nintendo has this problem too. Both of them are sitting on a lot of properties that, that can be good if they put in the effort and don't like add in something that fans wouldn't actually like, like need like pointless uh, controls or, or add-ons that they wouldn't normally need for a typical game that they like. And just go from there. Like, I don't understand why these companies are trying to overly complicate these things. And I know it's because they want to be unique and all that, but... Thank you. Because, like, Nintendo is always trying to innovate and trying to be, like, different than before. And then Sega tries doing the same thing. And, like, both companies are trying to say, like, oh, well, we don't look into the past. And I'm like, bitch, the past is what got you here. Why are you ignoring that? It's like, if all I wanted was a new Star Fox game and the game is exactly the same, just with different levels and maybe some different power-ups, then just give me that. I'm not asking you to rewrite the entire history of, of, of Star Fox or some shit. I mean, they've been doing that with Mario the entire time. I don't understand why they didn't do it with other games. Same thing for Zelda. They barely changed their formula with those games. It's like, for those games, they understood what they needed to do. But for everything else, they feel like they gotta change it. And it makes no sense. Same thing goes for like F Zero. It's just like, guys, just do what the GameCube version did because that was like the best one. To be fair, they didn't make that one. Sega did, which is ironic.
Yeah, Sage is great. She's basically um, she's basically either Nicole or um, or M from the comics. No worries, you're good. But yeah, like both both Sega and Nintendo have a lot of key characters and franchises that people love, but they're just being really fucking stupid for unknown reasons. I need to fix this. It's like somebody getting an A on a test. And then they say they take the same test and then they mess up. And they get like a lower score, but then they keep doing it. And you're just sitting there going like, how? <laughs> it's like you, you passed it the first time. How, how are you messing up the second time? And again, it's always because they're always trying to add in something nobody wants. Hello, Alex. Eh, nothing much to me just bitching about game companies not knowing what their fans want. Since I'm here, might as well clean up this line heart. Mostly the gums. Can fix that teeth to the tooth too. Yeah, it's like, and I understand if certain games didn't do well, but at the same time, if they didn't do well, there was probably something very specific that fans did not like about those games, and that's why it didn't do well, which has usually been the case, especially for Nintendo, because they always like, oh, we're bringing back this series you love, but then they change it. And everyone's just like, why? <laughs> it's kind of like with the Paper Mario series. It's like, oh, we're bringing back Paper Mario. Everyone's like, yay! But we're going to make it so that you use stickers to attack and rotate the field and stuff. And everyone's like, why? <laughs> and that's why they're remaking Thousand Year Door. Like, note that they didn't remake the original Paper Mario. Or or even um, or even uh, what you call it, Super Paper Mario? No, specifically Thousand Year Door, because that was the best one and had like the best character developments and, and side characters. And they know it too. They know that everybody loves that specific Mar uh, Paper Mario game, and like Paper Mario in general. Before before Nintendo got all anal about characters, had like really good. Um, side characters and it expanded on like on mario lore and stuff like that but then nintendo got super handsy on the on the series it's like okay no more new characters and everyone's like why they were good <laughs> yeah there, i mean there's a chance they might bring back golden sun since they brought back the, the advanced games so who knows maybe they're thinking about it but yeah, like, Nintendo is so fucking weird when it comes to this shit. It's like, okay, we'll bring it back, but we're gonna, but we're gonna change it. And I'm like, it's like, then why bring it back if you're not committed? 
you didn't want to bring it back, then don't bother. <laughs> don't make it worse just because you don't like how everybody else likes it. And like seriously, all they have to do with Star Fox, like they could they could literally bring back Star Fox Zero, which surprisingly they have not brought back. It's one of the very few um, Wii U games that they have not brought carried over to the Switch. They could literally bring that game back, just take out the stupid um, second screen controls and motion controls or whatever, or whatever the case that people were upset about. Just take those out, and the game is fine. That's literally it. Yeah, it's technically a rehash of of, um, of Star Fox 64, but that wasn't the problem. <laughs> so yeah, so surprisingly they have not brought back Star Fox Zero. And it's kind of weird that they didn't. Well, they did bring back um, Metroid recent, um, not too long ago, so there's that to think about. And that game did well. Thank God. Just a matter of whenever they bring um, Metroid 4, which at this rate is probably going to be on the new system. Or most likely on the new system. Remake of 2 and 3. Of the Prime series? Yeah. I heard there was like something a little bit jank of the recent remake of the first one. I forget what it was though. I think it was just like the lighting or something like that. Nothing like critical. Yeah, 4 is likely going to be on the new system. That's probably why they remade the first game for the Switch, just to kind of, like, tide people over until the later one comes out. But Nintendo also needs to kind of up their game a bit when it comes to system power, because... Like this doesn't affect every game that they that they make, but certain games just kind of need that extra that extra power, or else it's just not gonna bode well. And like certain games definitely need it, like Pokemon, for example, because well, Pokemon has has a lot of problems because they're being they're they're making their they're working on their games too fast and they're not getting enough polish. That's why the recent Pokemon game has its has a shit ton of problems. Well, at first it made sense because it was like they're just taking their time to like slowly improve their game console over time because consoles are getting to a point where there's not too much of a difference between generations anymore. It's like really, really, really vague. And like the differences are barely noticeable. And if they are noticeable, it's like not enough to make you not want to play the game on an older system type of situation. But then when it comes to Nintendo, they're pumping like this doesn't apply to all their games because some of their games look amazing while other ones look terrible for some reason but um a lot of the time it's because games like pokemon are being pushed through too quickly so they're not getting that quality control and then pokemon's still treating the games as if they're on handhelds because people who have emulated the game have shown that Pokemon has a lot more capabilities than what's than what the Switch is allowing 
or it's just not optimized uh, enough. So like the sad part is playing Switch games is better off on an emulator than it is on the actual console. And that's a really messed up thing to say. Yeah, Pokemon Bank is stupid. Like, the minute I'm able to get all of my Pokemon off of it, I'm just going to keep it that way and just deal with Pokemon not being able to be together anymore until they create a game where they can be get together again. And then I'll just pump them all into that game. Like, I have yet to play Scarlet and Violet because of my issues with Pokemon. Like, as far as I'm concerned, Sun and Moon was the last good Pokemon game. And then second would probably be X and Y just because of the triple battle thing. Because I thought triple battle was great. But yeah. Sword and Shield and Scarlet and Violet were step step backwards. Which is interesting of when they um, announced the A to Z game that they're teasing the whole Mega Evolution thing. I'm like, oh, you mean the thing that everybody liked that you took away? And the sad part is, the Pokemon, like the people behind Pokemon, even admitted why they do they do stuff like that because their the reasons behind that was, um, um, oh, we take away the stuff people like, so that way when we bring them back, they'll be like, oh, like, super excited about it. I was like, well, you're just gonna piss them off. Like, that's not smart. That's just being stupid. Black and White 2 is good. Voice actors for Pokemon? Nah. I mean, they could, but I don't think it would make the game any better, honestly. Uh, what do I think the next system could be like? Uh... It's probably not going to be that big of a jump, but if I had to take a wild guess, I would say it's probably going to be like a PS4, maybe. And that's being generous, because Nintendo is going to take their sweet time making their graphics better. If they if they go further than that, I will be surprised. Like, if they actually put in the effort to make their games look nicer, because Luck, because like lucky, luckily for them, the Switch did well, or else they would be in the same situation that they were in with the uh, with the Wii U, where companies couldn't make their games on the Wii U, and so they just decided to abandon the Wii U. But luckily for them, the Switch did well, so they didn't have that problem. Although the Switch still didn't get like a lot of major games that other consoles did and PC if anything they should just make a freaking Nintendo PC at this point just have a PC um, like console that does whatever the fuck they want it to do that'd probably be the smarter thing to do now Well, the Wii always had HD, it's just they didn't do anything with it. Like, it, you'd be surprised that certain consoles have, like, the capabilities of a lot of really interesting and cool stuff. Like, high res and textures and online and all that. It's just either the, 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 the owners themselves didn't do anything with it, or there were very few developers from other companies doing anything. So a lot of the time you just didn't get a lot of games that utilize that stuff because either nobody knew the consoles could even do it or there just wasn't enough people to to, to, to use it. Like the Dreamcast. The Dreamcast had online. <laughs> but very few games used it. Like there was supposed to, like there was a thing on the Dreamcast called the Black Market, and you would use that to download extra shit to your games. Like you were supposed to get um, Chaos Chow from the Black Market, 
for Sonic Adventure. Like that was a thing. But there was only like what five games or something that that used online for the Dreamcast. Most of the time it was people playing um Fantasy Star online, which people still play, surprisingly. Which is good. I mean hell, people still make Saturn games in Japan. Or around the world. See, here's the problem. Companies do not like using um, programs and other tools that they themselves did not make. They're slowly, very, 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 very slowly coming around to that idea. But a lot of the times they do not want to do it. That's why rollback netcode and stuff like that has had such a issue with companies using it because they don't want to use it they want to make their own net code when fans have already made the best the best um, tool for that and so companies are just really hard-headed about using that stuff so even though there's a solution they will go out of their way to not use it until they absolutely have to. That's why when COVID happened, it actually helped a lot of games because when nobody could, could you know, go outside and all that, people were playing online games. And that's when they realized how many online games had shit um, online. And so companies had to like scramble to make better netcode. So if it wasn't for COVID, we would still have shitty online games I mean we still do but a lot of them wised up and made their online better that's why Dragon Ball Fighters got better Yeah, Sega did a lot of shit before before it was really time to be trying that shit out. Sega was doing VR, they were doing um, the 32X stuff, where it's like an, an add-on to your console to make it play crazy high uh, crazy um, high res games or whatever you want to call it, just like advanced advanced versions of games. Um, Sega was doing online they're even doing like the whole tv thing nintendo tried that a couple of times they tried that with um the 64 dd because that was supposed to like download extra shit too or with the uh e-reader uh, i might as well try making sh making it shiny But yeah, it's like they have ideas that their that their consoles are just not powerful enough to accomplish, or at least, th or even if they were powerful enough, they didn't like commit to the idea. Or even worse, the the idea was only in like Japan or something, so nobody even knew it existed, so it didn't even have like a chance to try to 
be awesome. Assuming that everything worked out. But yeah, like, Sega and Nintendo have this problem. So yeah, it's like... Both companies almost do the exact same mistakes. Sega just did their mistakes faster than Nintendo did. And don't get me wrong, I like Sega. I like Sega slightly more than I like Nintendo. But that's mostly because of Sonic. <laughs> it's like, if I'm being perfectly honest, I only like Sega more because of Sonic. But, um... But yeah, both companies need to stop being stupid. Which it seems like Sega is slowly becoming that. They're slowly becoming less stupid, especially thanks to Sonic Frontiers. That seems to be the game where Sega's like, oh, wait. <laughs> you mean... <laughs> you mean we can make good Sonic games? Or not, not even that. It's like, you mean we can make something fans want? And we're like, yes. <laughs> yes, damn it. Now just keep it up. <laughs> And you don't even have to go crazy. Like, they don't have to be, like, reinventing the wheel here. It's just make the Sonic games play well, like Adventure did back in the day. Or even the classic Sega, uh, Sonic games. And then you're fine. Luckily, with Frontiers, they were able to add in, like, fighting stuff with Super Sonic. All they gotta do is make that less jank, and there you go. So hopefully whatever they've learned from that, they can apply it to the next game that they're working on. And then luckily, the people behind Sonic Frontiers actually give a shit. And they had to fight to get the game delayed because the game wasn't ready and Sega wanted to push it out. And they're like, no, please let us delay it. And Sega's like, okay. So they had like an extra year. And granted, it didn't fix everything they wanted to fix, but it definitely w uh, was a lot better than whatever version we would have got if it came out too early. Or, um, half-baked. So yeah, it was just... And it's, it's mostly because the higher-ups at Sega at the time don't didn't see Sonic as like a major series anymore. And that's why they were just like letting Sonic games get pumped out. But, uh... Luckily, the people behind Frontiers were trying to put in all their effort because um, Forces didn't do so well. So that game was like the catalyst of Frontiers being good. Yeah, Yakuza is like the, one of the few games that gets any actual attention from Sega. So yeah, it's like Sonic and Yakuza are like... <laughs> Are like all they got. <laughs> it's like, can we please just make a good game <laughs> and not have our fans be, be pissed? Because clearly they can make good games. It's just the higher ups not giving them the budget. Technically, yeah, to a degree, but. Oh, yeah, yeah, that thing. I mean, they're not re- well, some of them are not remakes, some of them are actual sequels. I think there was only, like, one remake, and the others were actual sequels. I'll have to rewatch it again, but, uh, but yeah, if you look closely, they're, um, a good chunk of them are not remakes.
I mean, all we can really do is just wait and see, because it looks like they're trying to put in effort. Which is good. Yeah, they're making Shinobi. And then we already know they're making another Sonic game. So I have to see where that's going. There's rumors that they're, they're remaking Sonic Adventure. Which is fine if they take everything they've learned from Frontiers and apply to Adventure. And if they can make Adventure bigger, then cool. Give uh, Have like a bigger city to run, out, run around in. Let's not do that. And if possible, add it. Well, I mean, they have to add in more characters because that's how Sonic Adventure was. But um, if they can do more with with bosses, um, then that'd be great. But yeah, we'll just have to wait and see. And if they don't remake Sonic Adventure and they just make like a continuation of the Adventure series, then also good. As long as they actually, you know, use what they learned from Frontiers and not fuck that up. And, you know, Sega giving them a budget that they can work with. Because, cause like, thanks to Front... Again, this is all because of Frontiers, but thanks to Frontiers, they were given more money to make the DLC for Frontiers. And everybody loves it. Yeah, there was some jinkiness with the final boss because of the targeting system or whatever, but that's just like a minor footnote to hopefully they can fix in the future. But everybody loved the gameplay for Amy's Tales and, Tales and Knuckles. Yeah, they were broken as fuck, but who cares? They were still fun. So it's like, okay, okay, you guys did all this. Now, what did we learn? So yeah, that, that's all. That's all that, that we're asking is just, guys, just take what you learned. Apply it. And don't fuck it up. Like, don't put in anything we don't need. And then after that, you're fine. some drool. Hold on. Need to do this. Do.
Anyway, enough of my ranting. Or bitching. Whatever you want to call it. Enough bitching. Hope everyone's having a good day. my TED talk. <laughs> well, if Sony can bring Bloodborne to PC, that would also be good. <laughs> I have yet to play Bloodborne, but I hear it's really good. All I know of Bloodborne is from the Max Orr video and the Rule 34 comic. What was her name? Maria? Is that the one? Is that the doll's name? I can't remember if the doll's name is Maria or if it's the, uh, the hunter. For me, it's mostly the aesthetics. Like, Ghost of Tsushima looks okay, but I like the aesthetics for Bloodborne more. I like the theme. Gothic horror. Uh, Legacy of Cain. Weren't they bringing that back, or am I crazy? Or was it just like a remaster? Yeah, there's a lot of games from back in the day that surprisingly aren't around. Or if they did come back, it's like in a more looser form, like Battletoads, for example. Like, it, it would be interesting to see them bring back series like um, Vector Man or... Well, Earthworm Jim was supposed to come back. I don't know what the fuck happened there. But that was one of them. Same thing for um, Toe Jam and Earl. 
Like, I don't remember if the game came out or if they're still working on it or if it got canceled. Probably canceled by with this luck. But, uh, series like that. It's a lot of lost games. It's like, when are we going to get another Glover? <laughs> uh,. I know companies want to say, well, games are getting more expensive, and I'm like, okay, explain to indie companies then. Because apparently they're doing alright. Figuring this shit out. Save. <clears throat> alright, I think I'm going to call it for now. Um, oh, random thought, but I remember... Oh, yeah, Lemmings was fun. I remember playing that. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of older games that... Could, that some, some of which have come back from, like, retro stuff, but and then others are just lost the time. Or, you know, they exist through emulators, but, you know, Nintendo's being a fucking asshole about that. But, um... But, yeah just a matter of time or maybe people will make games that are reminiscent to those types of games and we'll have to make do with that like have uh, spiritual successors that seems to be the the way to go at the moment but um but yeah i'm gonna call it for now um all i really have to do with this is put on a background and i don't know maybe make a bloody version for the fuck of it but um, this will be up on Patreon, subscribe star, and all that. And then um, since this is the last one for the third year um, we, uh, Fat Lovers Club, it'll be on sale as well. Oh, no worries, dude. If you're tired, you're tired. <laughs> I'm, I was trying to figure out <laughs> when to make a stream because I was like, okay, Alex gets home at this time. <laughs> How will I go about this? <laughs> so may, I'll, try to, I'll try to work around where you can actually chill. But um, but yeah, um, everybody take care. I will see you guys again tomorrow. I will do another stream. I don't know when. I'll try to do it earlier if possible. But if not, then I'll either do it at this time again or maybe at, at night or something. I don't know. But I'm going to try to do a stream uh, once a day for this week. All right. Everybody um, take care and I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.